Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 1st, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Happy Women's History Month. While we celebrate women's history, the Feisty News will be making history by offering the very first worldwide women's life skills training classes to prepare women for a bright future as leaders of our society. Women who are ready to see this world transform can find support as the world shifts through these classes, which begin this Saturday. Presented by the Feisty News and our partners, this month's women's free life skill training class will focus on mental health and guidance for peace of mind. The training class will be held during private Zoom meetings and will address a different women's issue each month with experts and support staff on hand to offer advice and tactics for women's progress. To attend the free class, all you have to do is subscribe to thefeistynews.com. The link to the private Zoom class will be sent out to su subscribers the day before the event. All women and interested men are welcome to attend. Let's make progress together. In world affairs, last week, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered an invasion of Ukraine, the second largest country by area in Europe after Russia, which it borders to the east and northeast. Putin is attempting to overtake Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, by force, ordering attacks by land, air, and sea, claiming that Ukraine is a threat to Russia's safety, even though Ukraine does not have the military force or the weaponized technology that Russia has. Even still, Putin has mentioned his nuclear war missiles several times, which many are taking as a threat to an, an imaginary enemy. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have already fled their homes since the Russian invasion began, traveling by bus, car, and even by foot to reach bordering countries where they can temporarily settle or fly out of the region. Ukraine citizens who remain by force or by choice have taken to the streets and taken up arms to protect the capital city. Nearly 17% of Ukraine military forces are women, including U Miss Ukraine 2015, Anastasia, who recently posted an image of her posing with an assault rifle right before joining the armed forces. She is just one of an impressive band of women who are a part of the Ukrainian military, the largest female military force in the world with 36,000 strong women who are perfectly trained to kill. In other news, Actress Amanda Bynes filed court documents Wednesday to end her conservatorship after nine years. A conservatorship is a legal status to which a court appoints a person to manage the financial and personal affairs. Amanda, a former Nickelodeon star, requested to terminate both the conservatorship of her person and the state in a position to petition submitted in California. The Nickelodeon alum was placed under her conservatorship in August, giving her mother in August 2013, giving her mother Lynn Bynes control of her affairs. The move came after Amanda was hospitalized on an involuntary psychiatric hold for allegedly starting a small fire in a stranger's driveway. She later tweeted in 2014 that she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder one month after a second 5150 hold. Amanda Bynes' parents, Lynn and Rick Bynes, are 100% supportive of the actor's motion to remove them as her conservator. In light of Amanda's request to end her conservatorship, along with Britney's big win in ending her 13-year conservatorship, we should explore what happens when a person is in one, what leads up to it, and how do they get out of the conservatorship without going crazy again? Today we have Dr. Jean Cirillo, an attorney and psychologist who works with people trapped in involuntary conservatorships. Dr. Jean, welcome to the Feisty. Can you tell us what could lead a person to enter into a conservatorship? Yes, thank you, Terika, for having me on the show. Definitely, usually conservatorship is used when a person can't manage their own assets, either financially 
or with activities of daily living, such as health, doctor's appointments. So the court appoints somebody else to act in the role of conservator or guardian, as they say in most states, California says conservator, but it basically means the same thing. They're back in the role where they can't make certain everyday decisions like going to the bank and withdrawing money or writing a check or signing a contract without the approval of their guardian or conservator. Thank you. I understand that perfectly. But Dr. Jean, who decides that you are unable to take care of your finances and decisions for your life? How can someone decide that for me? It usually starts when a celebrity in this case makes a mistake, gets into some kind of trouble legally or socially where like Brittany was uh, pounding on reporters' cars because they were chasing her around and driving her crazy if she wasn't crazy. But then somebody who knows them, a family member, in her case, it was her father. In a lot of cases, the manager, an attorney, somebody who is opportunistic and goes to the court, uh, the probate court, and says, I think this person needs a conservator. And all they have to do is get a doctor, a psychiatrist, uh, and another psychiatrist to back them up. Yes, that person should be declared incompetent, meaning they don't know the extent of their assets and can't reliably take care of them. And once that happens, once you're declared incompetent and a conservator is appointed, you have to go through the conservator if you want to get out of it or the court that appointed them or the doctors who mostly were also appointed or at least on a very friendly level with the conservator. It's very hard to find a neutral third party that's able to get involved especially when there's a lot of money at stake. People don't want to let go. You notice it doesn't happen very often to homeless people who have nothing to eat who are on the street who really need it. Thank you, Dr. Jean. We've watched Brittany's public battle to end her conservatorship, and now we're following Amanda's. How difficult is it to prove you're ready to end the conservatorship after you've been deemed unfit to care for yourself? Conservatorships were designed by their very nature to be easy in and hard out. And the reason for that is that most of the time it's an older person or somebody with a degenerative disease who's not going to get better. So you don't really have to worry about them being taken advantage of or them getting out of it because it's so unlikely to happen. In this case, she has to go back to the court and petition the court to be able to get out of the conservatorship. And then the court has to allow her, if they wish, to hire her own attorney. Or, I mean, a, a very idealistic version is the people that are holding conservatorship power over her have to agree. And if they agree, it makes it, what did Brittany say, 100,000% easier. But that's not likely to happen when there's money and celebrity and power involved. Well, Dr. Jean, many of us watching are on the road to great wealth. What can we do to avoid this situation where someone we don't trust comes in and takes away our power over our own lives? Yeah, I mean, don't get wealthy. But the other, <laughs> the other thing is, no, seriously, we can appoint somebody to be our power of attorney. That would mean you can appoint power of attorney over your finances or over health decisions. And it doesn't have to be the same person. If you say, if I ever become incapacitated, I, let's just say I don't want to be resuscitated health-wise, and so-and-so, Joe Smith is the person I appoint to the power of attorney to make the decisions if I can't. Now, that can be health. You can appoint John Brown to make the decisions financially if you can't. You can appoint several people. Very often now they have banks, law firms, institutions where there's checks and balances or supposed to be. Several of them that are managing somebody's assets so that one institution or one person can't go overboard with it. However, that's what you can do to protect yourself before you're in it. It's still 
doesn't protect you. Once you're in it, it's too late. It's already done for you. It's like after you're dead, you can't make a will. The, the, the state has already made a will and, and you can't take care of friends. It's only next of kin. So after you're in a conservatorship, you can't appoint your power of attorney or anything until you get out. You should do this before so that if anything ever comes up, that person can step in. And it shouldn't just be one person with all the responsibility or all the power. Sometimes power corrupts too much or the person can be bought off or they won't be available. You, you should appoint several people and or an, an agency like a bank or financial management company. Thank you so much, Dr. Jean. Awesome, awesome wisdom and advice. If you have any questions about legal conservatorship or want to connect with Dr. Jean Cirillo, please visit her website, drjean.tv. In other news, in case you missed it, in December 2021, the Food and Drug Administration reported that it will permanently allow patients to receive abortion pills by mail. Restrictions on the drug, which was first approved in 2000, were lifted earlier last year due to pandemic lockdown measures so that women could still have access. Although the strict rules of the pandemic have been relaxed, the FDA will continue to allow the abortion pill to be received through the mail permanently. However, 19 states, including Texas, have laws that supersede the FDA decision by barring telehealth consultations or mailing of abortion pills so women seeking the pill in those states will not be able to access them unless they travel to under other states to order them. Medically induced abortion involves two drugs taken over the course of several days. One of the drugs blocks a hormone necessary for pregnancy, while the second drug induces contractions. The second drug is already available with a doctor's prescription. The method now makes up 54% of all abortions performed before nine weeks, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. Let me make this clear. The fight for access to abortion is not a fight to kill children or even to end unwanted pregnancies. No woman is out there maliciously becoming pregnant on her own and plotting to kill the baby like a serial killer. The fight for access to abortion and abortion medication is a fight for all women to make decisions concerning our own bodies. We do not want anyone to have a say over what goes into our bodies or what comes out of it. We hate having to ask for permission to make choices for ourselves. We are perfectly capable of deciding what is right for us and it should be our right to decide without intervention from lawmakers who will never ever know what it's like to face such a difficult decision. Access to abortion is our right as humans. We're tired of asking for it, fighting for it. This is my body, so it should always be my choice. It's time for a break. Well, what is it like to get a hysterectomy? What has happened to push Kimora Lee Simmons away from her handsome husband? Answer these questions and more right after the break. Be right back. Hi, I'm Angelina, a fashion designer located in Ormond Beach, Florida. I'm also an owner of luxury handmade laundry online boutique. When I moved to United States, I was struggling to find beautiful laces and laundry at affordable price. So I decided to start my own company and bring something, something unique to US market. Angie Showroom is dedicated to providing high quality affordable intimates for people who want to feel comfortable and confident. We make our pieces from Italian and French silk, satin silk and lace. All our collections are limited and only less than 1% of women wear our collections worldwide. You deserve it all. Please visit us at angieshowroom.com. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? We're celebrating feisty women living the feisty life by profiling women who make decisions that are not easy to make and end up loving life because of it. In this installment of The Feisty Life on The Feisty News for Women, I want you to meet Tara, a feisty woman who boldly reveals that she had a surgical procedure that changed her life for the better. Tara, 
what was one of the secret ingredients to your happy life? Hi, my name is Tara and I had a hysterectomy. About five years ago, I started having problems with my menstrual cycle. Um, and I tried birth control. The doctor said that the birth control would um, decrease the amount of days and the flow of my cycle. I would sometimes bleed for 10, 14, even 21 days. And my bleeding was very, very heavy. Um, so the doctors tried birth control to manage the flow of my um, cycle and to decrease the days that didn't work. So I proceeded with the Mirena IUD, which was supposed to stop my cycle altogether, but I still had breakthrough bleeding. And again, heavy clotting, like the, the type of clotting when you stand up, it feels like something inside of you. It's just drops. Um, you go, you laugh, you're in the crowd, you laugh. You have to worry about laughing too hard because you're bleeding too hard or, you know, the, the clots will come. So um, the doctor first talked to me about having a hysterectomy. And although I knew in my heart, I didn't want to have any children. There was something wasn't sitting right with me about somebody telling me that I was no longer able to have children. I was probably around 37, 38 at this time. And when I had my son, I was already high risk, already decided I wasn't having any more kids. But again, it's just a difference when you say you're not having any and someone else tell you like, this is it, you can't have any. So um, with you know, as the doctors were trying and trying to stop the bleeding, um, it's, it just started happening more often. So my life became like maybe five or six days with without menstrual bleeding. And I would try playing trips, can't get in the water because I have to wear two oversized, like um, what are the overnight pads, like one in the front, one in the back, constantly checking. And it just became a problem. So um, the cause of my bleeding was fibroids. So at first I had two, and then it was three. And finally, when I made the decision to go ahead and have the hysterectomy, I ended up with four or five boys. Um, the biggest one was like three centimeters in size. Um, I think I had two that was like 1.7 centimeters. It was causing my stomach to be um, bigger than it was because the five boys were big. So it um, had my you know, caused my stomach to be bigger. So after speaking with um, my nurse practitioner, who was very cool, um, she just basically told me that if I didn't have the hysterectomy and I continued bleeding like I would bleed, I would need blood transfusions because the excessive bleeding was causing me to have anemia. And anemia is low red blood cell counts, low iron. And I have a teenage son. He's very active. His mother's always tired. The dark circles around my eyes eyes is from having low iron from the anemia for living with the five boys and all the excessive bleeding all that time so i just decided to to go ahead i was tired my husband was tired my children were tired so my anemia was affecting everybody in the family we were all tired all the time so may 7th 2021 last year i went ahead and had the hysterectomy um they did it with robotic surgery, which means that it was like five holes in my stomach, they went in. And um, the type of hysterectomy I had is called a complete hysterectomy with ovaries intact. So I still have my ovaries, but I no longer have my uterus, um, fallopian tubes, um, my cervix, all of that is gone. Um, and I was also afraid about the cervix part because in the black community, you hear all the time, that's going to cause a problem with sex. But since I've had the hysterectomy, I've noticed no difference in sex. My husband has noticed no difference. So all of that is just probably old wives' tales. Um, the recovery time for the, from the robotic surgery was very quick. I had my surgery on a Friday. Um, that, mo that Sunday was Mother's Day. I was in the car with my husband going to get mangoes from the mango man. Like the, the recovery 
I wasn't sore. I didn't have a problem getting up, using the bathroom. Like all of the stories you hear that'll make you afraid of getting a hysterectomy because I guess back, back in the days they used to cut us open like a C-section and women couldn't walk. They had problems with gas. They had painful problems. I didn't have any gas problems. I didn't have any of that. And I was so happy that I finally decided to get it. So after the six week recovery time, since then I regained my energy. My iron levels are up. I'm no longer at risk of needing a blood transfusion because I'm not losing blood. I'm not having any, any problems at all. And it was the best decision that I've ever made. So if you're having a, a problem with fibroids or threatening excessive anemia or anything like that, and you just need a little bit of encouragement, um, I would definitely suggest doing it. If you're, if you're done, if you know you're done having children, because obviously that's not a procedure that's reversible. So, um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tara, for sharing your truth. Not many women would be bold enough to be so transparent, but we know you have no shame in your game. Thank you, Tara, for inspiring us to make the best medical choices for ourselves. In other news, Kamora Lee Simmons is making headlines, and this time it's not about her fashion brand. Her husband, Timmy, Tim Leisner, recently claimed in court that he faked his divorce from two women in order to remarry and that he exchanged vows with fashion mogul Kamora Lee Simmons while still legally wed to his previous spouse. Leisner admitted to photoshopping the divorce document so that he could obtain a marriage license with Kamora. The former Goldman Sachs banker admitted to this fraud while testifying in Brooklyn federal court last week during the bribery trial of his former Goldman Sachs colleague, Roger Ying. Simmons, the reality television star, Kimora, fashion designer and ex-wife of hip hop mogul Russell Simmons, married the German born investment banker in 2014. And they have had a quiet, peaceful marriage, giving birth to a son, Wolf Lee, and then adopting a child together, Gary. They were living the fab life up until her husband pled guilty to helping Malaysian financer Joe Lowe steal hundreds of millions of dollars from the 1MDB Sovereign Development Fund. Damn, Kamara, you reached into the bag and pulled out a scammer. I'm so disappointed in him. I feel like screaming at him like Tyra Banks. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Have you noticed that Kamora bothers no one? She raises her kids, builds her brands, and wants to enjoy the family life, don't y'all? Drama seems to be able to happen to anyone. We still love you, Kamora, but as for your cam scammer, scammer husband, anything built on a lie will crumble one day. It's sad that you decided to take innocent people with you. I am personally disgusted and consistently disappointed by most men. And I'm so tired of telling these stories. There's gotta be smart, emotionally sound men, mature men, men who stand up and protect women, supporting their happiness and success instead of placing them in danger and hurting them emotionally and financially. Where are the men who are noble enough to stand beside a powerful woman and make sure she looks better because she's with him? Do you know a good man? Does anyone? Please reach out to me if you do, because now I'm on a mission to find out if there are good men in this world. And I'm gonna introduce them to you. There's gotta be. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. News for women.